Bestum is home to the best preserved Greek temples on Italy's mainland. These structures are breathtaking, and it's almost as if they hold secrets. Located in Italy's southern region of Campania, it's the perfect jumping off point into the home of the modern Mediterranean diet. Above Paestum in the mountains, you'll find Castello di Rocca Cilento. This historic building was recently renovated and converted into a hotel, bistro, and restaurant. I start with a quick tour of the property before sitting down to a modern take on traditional Mediterranean flavors. A variante della pizza cilentana. Tre grandi diversi. I personally love the diversity of pizza in Italy. Mozzarella di buffalo, anchovies. It's got my name written all over it. Some sourdough. Mm. Wow. I know a lot of people are turned off by anchovies, but they add so much flavor and salt to the food, especially when you have a creaminess to it. Everything kind of melts together. And then the crust, it's almost like a, an elephant ear that you'd get at the fair. It's super good. I love pizza with airy crust. It feels like I'm consuming less calories. I know it's not the case. <laughs> It just tastes like bad fried things I used to have when I was a kid and I couldn't resist. <laughs> Sucker for anything with tomatoes on it. This looks good. <laughs> Tomato is so rich and so sweet. It just gives so much flavor. Mm. Next, a sparkling and a dry wine made from Fiano, one of the greatest white grapes in Italy in my opinion. Definitely waxy, like I associate with Fiano. Kind of white pear, white flowery. Waxy, rich, full. Solid. Campagna, gonna have the seafood, gambero rosso, mozzarella di buffalo, fresh shrimp, especially gambero rosso. The meat is so sweet. Should go really well with the fiano. Elevates the wine, actually, quite a bit. Fusilli, it's got tomato sauce, and Campagna tomatoes are great, so. Sweet, got the cheese, I think, with the aliana cold really well. What makes Italian red grapes so unique is the acidity and the tannin quality, and it always goes so great with tomato-based dishes. That's why you give wines time. This is a heck of a lot better once it got some air. A lot better. The oakiness kind of settled into it, got nice texture and this little smokiness. Oh, it's buffalo, makes sense. Cooked just right. Nice and raw. Just further south is the village of Polica. This is home to the Future Food Institute, an organization dedicated to educating on global food systems. It's based on the work of Ansel and Margaret Keyes, who put together several books on human longevity via the Mediterranean diet. One of the founders, Sara, gives our group a short presentation before we sit down to a home-cooked Mediterranean meal. Let's start with some pizzetta fritte. Next up is one of the staples of the Mediterranean diet. Olives, the essential component for the Mediterranean diet. Olives and olive oil. I like well-preserved olives because they have a certain kind of meatiness to it. It's such a simple dish, but it's really good. I love in Italy the day-old bread recipes. Olives, tomatoes. Day-old bread just soaks up the flavor so nice. I went through a period in my life where I cleaned out eating wheat and bread. Bread is so delicious. You can do so many things with it. <clears throat> Well, they can fry it, can eat it fresh, make day-old bread recipes like this frittata. Oh my gosh, I think it's got sage and rosemary in it. It's like a delicious, savory, not sweet donut. Mm. <laughs> the three staples of the Mediterranean diet, bread, olive oil, and wine. One of the components of any slow food type movement, Mediterranean, whatever, is eat, eat and drink local. So have some local Fiano, why the heck not? Good Fiano. White flour, white pear. I like it. Pretty full, nice acidity. Should go great with the fish. I love all Mediterranean fish, sardines, anchovies, give them to me all. I know it can be a little pungent for a lot of people, but the oily fish, so good. A lot of omega-3, so delicious. I think it's going to go great with the Fiano. With pairings like this, the saltiness of the fish really elevates the fruit of the wine. Veggies, obviously, super important part of the Mediterranean diet. And everything always tastes better with salt and olive oil. <laughs> a lot of people associate tomatoes with Italian food, Mediterranean diet, but really, tomatoes have only been in Italy for several hundred years. But I still count them as part of the Italian cuisine and the Mediterranean diet. And I love tomato and pasta. Mm, beautiful with the alianico. There are a few things in life that bring me so much joy. Is a tomato-based pasta or pizza and red wine.
The coastal village of Pielpi is where Ansel and Margaret Keys had a villa. It's now home to the museum dedicated to the Mediterranean diet. It's a living museum, home to the fish, produce, and legumes that make up this local cuisine. I listened patiently to the presentation, but it's the olive oil tasting that I'm here for. The museum gives us three samples. One of high quality olive oil, one industrial olive oil, and an old rancid one. I think that three is the high quality one, two is the faulty one, one is the supermarket one. So I got them all right. High quality olive oil to me has to be spicy with a little bit of bitterness and it has to have a long finish. When you have some olive oil that goes a little bit rancid, it has like this oxidized bruise type of smell and the flavor just feels type of flat. And then when you have industrial olive oil, it's just, it's just not very flavorful. Just like if you have a fast food hamburger compared to a super nice hamburger. Bufala di mozzarella is one of the unique protected cheeses of Campania. Made with buffalo milk, it's distinctively different than the cheap shredded stuff that most people buy from the supermarkets. Sara tells us about the philosophy of Tenuta Chirico. The place where they started uh, many years ago their farm and his dad has been really a pioneer. He decided that uh, he wanted to create a full cycle. So he's producing the feeding for the buffaloes uh, and uh, from there he's going all the way through the chain up to producing their energy that are lighting up their company, their farms. Now time to taste. We start with a plate of different cheeses made with buffalo milk. I love mozzarella di bufala. Unique cheese to Campania. Let's try the traditional one. If you've never had fresh mozzarella, it's so creamy, it's so good, so raw. This one is infused with the mirta. That's so good, it literally tastes like it has the cure inside. My goodness. <laughs> okay, caccia cavallo with bufala milk. Mmm, is that rosemary? My goodness, that's good. Let's taste it with Alianico. I saw a pop study once that said cheese releases the same chemicals in your brain as cocaine. And I know it was just a pop study, but when you have good cheese, you can see why. <laughs> I think my favorite is the buffalo mozzarella with the mirta or the cavallo with Alianico. It's so spicy. High quality cheese should have so much as tingling acidity. That's brilliant. I love the one with mirta because it has this Mediterranean, it's almost like a mix between lemongrass and potpourri in the mozzarella. Mmm. Mmm. I don't do a ton of dairy, but I make the exception for cheese. And I think I'm all dairied out for the month, but it was worth it. <laughs> we step back inside for some gelato made from buffalo milk. I usually have a hard time digesting ice cream, but high quality gelato from Italy is much easier on my stomach. It's kind of gamier. Let's try the one with Mirta. Pretty good, so it comes out super creamy and that Mediterranean herb flavor comes out. A lot better than I expected. Chocolate, I always love chocolate gelato when I'm in Italy. I can't get enough of it. Nah. That's literally better than drugs. <laughs> Swear I guess. Agriturismos are one of the staples of local tourism. Here you can stop in, sleep, and get a home cooked meal. I say it all, all the time, it baffles me why I don't see more chili in Italy. That's why I like the South, because they have more chili. I think Italian food's great, but a little bit of chili would really, really elevate it. I love chili. Yeah, got some bite. Nothing fancy here, just a good liter of house vino rosso. Just a simple house wine, a liter of rosso. It's good. I'm with a group of journalists and Sara entertains the table while the dishes start coming out. I love that this is going to be a meatless lunch. Pasta with eggplants all in the south of Italy. People forget some of the best food in Italy is because it was poor person food. They couldn't always afford meat, so I like pastas with a lot of vegetables in them. Eggplant does have this texture. It doesn't like doesn't make me miss meat at all. Let me try the barley, rice, and cabbage. That's good because my grandmother used to cook a lot of barley soup when I was a kid. So it kind of gives me that flavor, that barley-like flavor. Also, cabbage can sometimes be a little bit too sulfurous for people. But I really like it. Up oh, my wheelhouse. This is what I want to eat with a little vino rosso. Not the perfect pairing, but I'll, it'll do. Lucky me. Red plant parmesan. Zucchini parmesan. Oh, zucchini. 
Thank you for correcting me. So that's what I said previously. Fake Parmesan out of anything. Excuse me. Barrage, zucchini, eggplant. But man, I don't think there's much better for me in Italy in a Parmesan dish. What we got here? Stuffed tomato with bread, breadcrumbs, and tomato. I don't know. It must be good. It's tomato. I'm sold. <laughs> With the wine. Tomato and red wine, especially in Italy. The acidity just hot. brings out so much of the sweetness in the tomato. Mi piace. This is actually pretty solid table wine, like house wine. It's pretty good. Time for formaggio. Oh, that was, it's big. I just want to eat it like. You have to put it on this. Oh man, that smells so good. It smells like fig and lemon. I used to always be adamant about no marmalade on cheese until I started doing it and I was like, wow, this is awesome. So we got fig on, is this, this must be a, kind of a pecorino cheese, is it soupy? It's a sheep's milk cheese done in the style of parmigiano reggiano. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> the soft cheese with the marmalade is the best. I think that soft cheeses, especially if they're stinky, are always the best with marmalade. It's literally like marmalade sex. Seriously, that's so good. <laughs> The fig is another symbol of Mediterranean cuisine. Nearby at Santo Miele, a family has harnessed the flavor of the white fig, which in Italian is called Fico Bianco. Very soft pink, it's not dark like the kind of fig that you generally find around. Fresh figs don't keep well. You have to dry them to preserve them, and Santo Miele incorporates dry figs into several sweet products. A slice of history. Inside we find some old figs preserved with volcanic ash from nearby Pompeii when Mount Vesuvius exploded. But it's time to head upstairs and try some of the sweets. I love fresh dried figs so much because it tastes almost like a fig newton. So it reminds me of the almanantula and nuttiness. Mm. Fig inside Brazilian cacao. That is good. The best fine dining that I've ever had is when you look at something and it tastes different than you expect it to. It doesn't taste as figgy as I would expect. It's almost like really, really good dark chocolate with a little bit of crunchiness from the seeds of the fig. Sparkling wines from Campania keep getting better and better and better. A figgy biscuit, let's see. It doesn't taste like fig, it's more buttery. Almost like a ginger cookie. Good though. I go around in search of my favorite. I'm just walking around the table and taking the leftover fig and uh, dark chocolate that nobody's eating. <laughs> mm. 